Good afternoon, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful Sunday here in Nebraska on the banks of the North Platte River. It's a gorgeous day. The dogs are outside playing, and Lisa's actually getting her hair done, and we've been doing some work around the place, and I thought I would sit down and nerd out with you for a few minutes. Um, I, I've been doing this Bible study, John to Know, James to Grow. I've told you that before, but there's a link in the show notes if you want to sign up, basically 30 days in a row of studying John, the book of John, the gospel of John, to get to know Jesus, and the five chapters of the book of James to get to know the playbook for the Christian in life. Just a great Bible study. There's almost 300 people doing it right now. And you can sign up anytime you want. It's free. You sign up, you put your email address in it, and 30 days in a row you get an email regarding this Bible study. So in the process of writing that study, it got to James 5 and finished. I've actually finished a couple weeks ahead of everybody else because I was writing the story, of course, ahead of the people participating in it. But um, got to the end in James chapter 5. It just blew me away how I've been writing this book, Infinitely Happier, and I feel led to do this Bible study and, and lead people through John to know and James to grow. And I never saw it coming, but John is basically the book where infinite happiness comes from, the, the, the whole idea that, that we're supposed to enjoy and be at peace and have purpose and meaning and also happiness in this life now, not just waiting for heaven, but to have it now. And then James comes along and in chapter five just drops a bomb that <laughs> that made me realize, holy cow, the, the whole New Testament is telling us this. The whole Old Testament is telling us this. God wants us to be happy and there's a good reason for it. So if you want to do the study, check it out, click on the link. But in writing that, James chapter five, I, I just geeked out for a while about the Greek and Hebrew words that we get the words blessed or blessed and the, and the word happiness or happy in the New Testament and, and, and what those words mean and how they're translated and how unfortunate it is sometimes that they're translated some ways. And we just I kind of nerded out on that for a minute. So I thought I'd bring some of that to you today to kind of talk about what macaroni has to do with anything. Uh, as we're here in Season 2, Episode 27, we'll talk about macaroni and dancing and all kinds of stuff. We'll also talk about James and Greek and Hebrew and all kinds of fun stuff. And we're going to wrap up. Up, uh, the John to know James to grow study uh, with uh, some thoughts about macaroni. It's, it's kind of a funny thing. It, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> How's Action April going for you? By the way, I hope it's going well. I hope you've made some decisions. You're sticking to them. You set your intention. You're following through. You're winning the morning and winning the days, and you're getting stuff done in April because we're you know more than halfway through April now. Believe it or not. And so I uh, hope it's going well. And I just, like I said, I wanted to to kind of nerd out for a few minutes on James and, and, uh, and happiness. Uh, we're going to talk about why we need to be happy. We're going to talk about macaroni and the macarena. And it's all Greek to me with a little Hebrew thrown in. And we're going to start today. Hey, I'm so glad to have you listening. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my unbelievably beautiful and brilliant wife, Lisa Warren, and the Super Pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get that done. You can get the show notes and more on my website at W1MD.com and we're coming soon with the Infinitely Happier app where we're going to have a community to connect people in real time in the in the world, not just in writing. But it's going to be an amazing place where we can all get rid of some of the difficult things about social media and we can spend some time getting to know each other, helping each other, praying for each other, and it's going to be great. But the Infinitely Happier app is going to roll out only to my newsletter subscribers at the start. So W1MD.com slash newsletter will get you not only my weekly newsletter, which my best prescription for how you can change your mind and change your life, but also the early invite to the absolutely free Infinitely Happier app. Hey, I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and my podcast is here to help you do self-brain surgery to change your mind and change your life, so let's get after it. Okay, we're going to start here, uh, like I said, James chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Let me read it to you. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering... Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count them as blessed, those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Now, I want to just 
geek out on verses 10 and 11 for a second. This is an example of why I love to study the Bible, because every time you come to the Word with an open heart, God will open your eyes to see truth. Sometimes it's truth you never noticed before. It's always been there, but He reveals it to you through His grace at the right time for it to apply to your life in the way that only you can see it at that moment. And God opens your eyes to just blow you away sometimes, and He did that for me this week when I got to James chapter 5, just like He promised He would in John sixteen thirteen when He says, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. And that's what happens when you read the Bible with an open heart, but not with an agenda, but with show me what you've got for me today, God, the Spirit will do it every time. So in James 5, 10, and 11, James reminds us of the prophets who were persecuted for their faith. Now, what does he say about how we think about those prophets' lives? He says, as you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. Now, that's the NIV. And it's unfortunate, I think, that they used the word blessed there because blessed or blessed, depending on how you were raised, has a, a pious spiritual connotation to it. But the actual word, the Greek word that's used in the text there is the word makarios. And makarios unfortunately, is translated as this word blessed, but blessed doesn't mean in English in 2021 what it meant back then when they when they were originally translating it and has persisted in those translations. Makarios actually means happy. It means happy. It means the, the experience of being happy. Here's a Greek scholar. I'll put a link to the show notes uh, from Eberim uh, Publications. The adjective makarios is in translations of the New Testament commonly translated with the word blessed. But blessed doesn't really mean anything. Blessed is a, a former pagan term that stemmed from a ritual that was used, a Germanic word for a ritual, and was adopted into Christianese where it came to denote something specifically religious. Unlike the English word blessed, the Greek word makarios actually means something real and practical. Now, here's the the thing, friend. James doesn't use the adjective makarios in verse 11 when he said we count as blessed. He uses the verb form of the word makarios, which is makarizo, which literally means to to make happy or to happify. I love that word, happify. I'm going to use that a lot. The word happify. Makarizo and makarios are the roots from which we get fun words. Words that mean happy things, like the dance Macarena. Hey, Macarena, right? Nobody ever can't smile when they're doing the Macarena. It's a happy dance. And the reason it's called that is because it comes from Macarios. It's it's a happy thing. And the word macaroni, which is the most fun food of all time of your childhood, craft macaroni and cheese, maybe even today, for some people, not admitting who that might be, would think craft macaroni and cheese is almost the perfect food group. I mean, how could you not eat crap macaroni and cheese and dance the macarena and say, I'm unhappy. How could you not be happy with macaroni and cheese and doing the macarena, right? That's the, the kind of thing that we get from the word makarios. We're happified. And it gets even better. In James 5.11, it's even more than to make happy because makarizo also means something much deeper. I'm not trying to be silly with this. It's something deeper. The word means to make reckon or declare to be untouchable now friend if you get nothing else i'm not like i said i'm not being silly the whole macaroni and macarena thing i'm not being silly what it means is that it makes us untouchable in our life we can become bulletproof this is how friend you go through the hard life john 16 33 and still have abundance in your life john 10 10 this is the the gift, the mechanism, the power, the the miracle, the quantum mechanics thing that Jesus does to happify us in a difficult life. He makes us untouchable. And so you can read those, those verses again and substitute the word untouchable. Think about it, in fact, in the Beatitudes when Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek. If you read that as untouchable, it changes everything. You're wondering how you can be blessed, how you can be happy when you're being persecuted. What you're really experiencing is that God can make you untouchable. He can make you able to to go through that and not be sad and not be crushed and not be destroyed and not be broken down, but to still have hope and to be at peace in your spirit and to still be happy. Hey, Macarena, that's what untouchability is. This form of the word, 
Okay, the verb makariso only shows up in the Bible twice: Luke one forty eight and James five eleven. The noun form is makarismos, which means untouchability, not untouchable, but untouchability. And that shows up three times, twice in Romans. There's a passage in Romans 4, 6 through 9. I want to read it in the Young's Literal Translation, because Young's Literal is the most literal translation. He didn't try to make it make sense in English. He just literally translated the words as best he could. And he says this, Even as David also doth speak of the happiness of the man to whom God doth reckon righteousness apart from works. So I'll break that down. David talks about how happy a person is when God doesn't uh, make him do stuff to become righteous. Even as David also doth speak of the happiness of the man to whom God doth recognize, doth reckon righteousness apart from works, happy they whose lawless acts were forgiven and whose sins were covered. Makarios, happy they were whose lawless acts were forgiven. Happy the man to whom the Lord doesn't count sin, doesn't may not reckon sin, Young says. Happy, Makarios. Is this happiness then upon the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised? For we say that the faith was reckoned to Abraham to righteousness. Is this happiness? Is this untouchability? Is this Makarios? Galatians 4.15 in Young's Literal. What then was your happiness? What then was your untouchability? For I testify you that if it were possible, you would have plucked your eyes out and given them to me. He's not saying you have this silly, paste a smile on and be happy no matter what happens. And he's not saying that it's some blessed thing that you're going to receive later if you can gut it out now, although we are going to get heaven in exchange for that. He's saying you can be untouchable, which will then make you happy because it, what makes us unhappy is when circumstances wreck us. And this gift, this this mechanical quantum thing that God says he can do for you, if you have faith in him, if you believe in his son, is that he will make you untouchable. He will make you happy. He will give you makarios. The, the idea that James is getting at here in, in 5.11 is transformational. It, it should blow you away. It should radically alter the arc and the course of your life, friend. It's missed if you translate that as blessed, if you think of it as something that happens to you later, if you can just knuckle it out. Randy Alcorn wrote, I think, the very best book on this subject. It's called Happiness. I've, I've actually reached out to Randy's people. To, I don't have a way to directly contact him. So if you're listening, Randy, I sent you an email. Talk to your people. I, I'm trying to get Randy Alcorn to come on the podcast to talk about this idea because it ties directly into Infinitely Happier Than I'm Writing. It ties directly into the end of I've Seen the End of You, my last book. It ties directly into the idea that you need to be happy to make it through life in a way that will attract others to saving faith in Jesus and to give you hope for the ability to live the rest of your life and not give up. You need to be happy. You must be happy. Here's why. If you're not happy, your kids won't be happy either. If you're not happy, your your spouse won't be happy. If you're not happy, you will create a gener- generational curse for your family, and that could be broken. If you can break this cycle and learn how to eat macaroni and fall in love with Jesus and be happy and do the macarena and get this Macarios deep in your soul because Jesus loves you and he wants you to have abundance. The thief comes, he says in John 10.10, 10, to steal and kill and destroy. But I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Randy Alcorn wrote this in his book, Happiness. Blessed, blessed, focuses the attention on the source of the benefit that has come from God. While happy describes the state of the person who receives the benefit. The the meaning can't be more opposite. Jesus is not saying that if you can be a peacemaker, that sometime later, after you've been crushed and destroyed and, and blown up and martyred and horrible and had a horrible life and been miserable and gone through all these hard things, that God will give you some blessing in return. That is not what he is saying. Jesus is literally saying that I will give you this untouchability that will help you stay happy and stay joyful and stay with a purpose and stay with a with a peace of mind and stay with the ability to stick it out if you have faith in me and that will make you happy no matter what you go through no matter what your circumstances are you can still be happy you can still be untouchable listen to this carefully friend this is going to, it can change your life james is not saying that we look at the prophets and consider them to have been blessed later 
to say, oh, wow, you know, those guys really suffered and God will bless them in heaven. That is not the idea. The idea would then translate into us thinking that God wants us to just knuckle down and, and huddle against the pain and toil of this life and suffer through this miserable planet in exchange for some future blessing or state of being blessed or to be looked upon as particularly saintly by others later. That is not what James is saying. He is saying that we look back on those prophets' lives, we look back on Job's life, and we say, wow, their faith made them untouchable. Their faith made them unfazed by danger and persecution and able to withstand all the trials and still have happy, productive, powerful lives of purpose and impact, and I can have that too. That's what James is saying. In other words, it is not that the prophets suffered through and kept their faith and then entered into a place of being, a state of being considered blessed by us. The power of faith is that it gives you an untouchable, unshakable joy despite all the trials of life, despite the hard circumstances, and that such a life is then redeemed eternally in heaven. Faith gives you the juice to be untouchable in spite of hardship. Faith happifies you. Faith gives you the macarona macaroni and the macarena that's what mary's saying by the way in mary's song in luke 148 and forgive me i'm not talking about a particular interpretation or denomination or any of that but what she's literally saying is not that she will be called blessed later by others and should be worshiped by other people mary is saying rather that we can look at her life and see what happens when you have a faith in jesus and you know that he is god now mary knew that she was a virgin and she knew when she became pregnant that she absolutely was carrying God's child because she was a virgin and she knew it. She did not doubt Jesus was the son of God. And that faith in Jesus gave her the ability to have joy and purpose and perseverance and to be happified even while living a life that she knew was going to end up with her son brutally murdered, crucified on a cross and taken from her. We look back at Mary and we say, wow, her faith made her untouchable, made her able to withstand all that. We count Mary blessed because we can see that that untouchable faith gave her the happiness and peace and joy and purpose in her life that she was then able to withstand all that hard stuff that was coming along. Go read Romans 8 through that lens and tell me if this word doesn't make your heart beat a little faster. Romans 8, 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or I'm adding this glioblastoma or divorce or bankruptcy or the wrong president or the wrong your politician not winning or pandemics or COVID-19, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are even more, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is unshakable. Paul is untouchable. Why? Because of John 15, 11, when Jesus said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy is may be complete. How much more complete can you be than complete? How much more infinite How much more infinitely happier can you be than complete? When Jesus says, I'm putting something inside you that will fill you up so much that nothing that happens in your life will be able to shake you. Friend, Jackie, Lola, Will, I'm telling you, Chris, Mary, Susan, everybody who's listening, you can't be shaken. If Jesus Christ is inside you, taste and see, Psalm 34, 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Guess what the Hebrew word for blessed there is? Asher. The word Asher, guess what Guess what Asher literally means? It means happy. That's why people named their kids Asher in the Old Testament, because the word means happy. Happy is the person who takes refuge in God. Taste and see, he says. Eat me up. Eat that macaroni that gives you Macarios and taste and see, and you will find yourself unshakable, friend. 
That's where that's where we are supposed to be in our life. We're supposed to a, to be able to withstand the hardships of life because Jesus said in John sixteen thirty three, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He's saying literally that we can too, and that that ought to make us infinitely happier. You want a piece of that? You got to you got to taste and see, friend, and you got to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. I know that was a long geek out on one little Bible verse, but that's how I roll. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and my podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes every month, and more. And patrons like you allow us to say ad free and keep growing. Patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Hey, please subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And go to my website, wleewarnmd.com slash newsletter, and sign up for the newsletter so you can find out about the app and get everything else going on there, my books and everything else at the, at the website, w1md.com. The theme music for the show is Water Into Wine by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by Tommy and the good people who are changing the world at Tommy Walker Ministries. Lisa and I support them, and you should too. Get the music for free and consider supporting their great work at tommywalkerministries.org. And if you need prayer, please go to the prayer wall, w1md.com slash prayer, and join us as a prayer partner there for other folks too. Remember, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind. I want you to be infinitely happier, and I want you to start today. Please pray for uh, the Christian Book Awards. May 6th, we've been nominated for the finalist in the biography and memoir section. One of those 12 category winners will go on to become the Christian Book of the Year for last year. Pray about that. May the 6th, I'll let you know what happens. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day. I'm just going to let Tommy play you out of here for a little bit. 